بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام والأتمين الأكملين على مبعوث بحق هداية ورحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وأنفعنا بما علمتنا وجدنا علما All praise due to Allah We praise Him We seek His help and we seek His forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our actions from whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides and can misguide and whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads astray none can guide and I bear witness that there is no God or deity worthy of worship but one Allah alone and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. I ask Allah azza wa jal to teach us what benefits us and to benefit us with what he has taught us and to increase us in Islamic knowledge. I ask Allah azza wa jal to reward and bless each and every single one of you for attending and to make this heavy in the skills of your good deeds. And lastly, I ask Allah azza wa jal to protect, safeguard and grant victory to the greatest people alive in our era, the people of Palestine, he is all capable, inshallah. Amma ba'd, we continue, we continue on with the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. We are still at phase two. In the last lesson, we discussed the scandal that Zulaikha, the wife of Al-Aziz did. She went and tried to rape Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. So she ran and he ran. He ran to the door. To open the door on the way, she ran to the door to stop him from opening the door and she pulled his shirt. In that moment, the husband walks in. The husband walks in and he had a witness. She claimed that she was the one that was getting raped. And then Yusuf والسلام, he said, No, she tried to seduce me. And then the witness was there to prove the innocence of Yusuf والسلام, by explaining the rip from the shirt of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Then we realized, we dissected the whole topic, we realized the subhanAllah, the personality of the Aziz, the minister, and the personality of his wife, Zulaikha, and that she was the man of the house, she was the one in authority, she was the one in power, and he was the the youth, the the youth. The reply of the minister, was Yusuf a'rid an hadha? This is important for what's going to happen today. Yusuf a'rid an hadha. Don't mention this to no one. And you, yani, tubi, do repentance. In the kikunti min al khatiin, you were of those who did yani, a mistake. In Arabic language, they are the most simplest words he can ever choose. The simplest of words. Yani, he didn't even tell her off properly, yani, in other words. And we said, and that's it. He didn't do nothing else. So then we explain the misconception about the youth. What's the youth? We see it thrown out online a lot and things like that. So we explain the difference between a the youth, a real the youth, and a person that has the characteristics of a the youth. All that was in the last lesson. Whoever has not watched it, you can go watch it on either Facebook or YouTube with Allah Azza wa Jal. Tayyip. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in the Quran, وَقَالَ نِسْوَةٌ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ امْرَأَةُ الْعَزِيزِ تُرَاوِدُ فَتَاهَا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ قَدْ شَغَفَهَا حُبَّا إِنَّا لَنَرَاهَا فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ فَلَمَّا سَمِعَتْ بِمَكْرِهِنْ The thing is, like I said, oh, and I always say, if you to read the translation of these verses, it's, it's clear, it's proof. It's clear, you don't need to dissect it. The reason we do tafsir, the reason we dive into these verses, the reason we do instant bath and derive uh, virtues from these uh, subhanAllah verses from the Quran is so we can relate it to this day and age. To find the fruit of the verses, and a few words can make a huge difference, huge uh, difference of, of meaning, a huge difference of understanding the verse again. So the next time you hear it or the next time you read it, you have a different feel to it. You live in it, you live in the verses. Okay, and this verse is the same. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the women of the city said a statement. And then he says, he explains this statement by saying it's called a makr. Makr, what's makr? We're going to get to it, inshallah. This statement, my brothers and my sisters in Islam, I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to answer at the end of the class. I'm going to translate the verse and then we're going to dissect it, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the women said, the women of the city started to gossip, they started to talk. And they said these words, Imratul Aziz, the wife of the minister, to rawidu fataha an nafsi. She seduced her uh, slave or the child that she's been to be looking after. 
Because Shekhafa her hubba, her love has reached a, 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 a position, a position of obsession, we indeed see her of the wrongdoers. That statement. The wife of the minister, she seduced the slave. Her heart has been filled with the love of Yusuf. Indeed, we see her doing a mistake. She's in a state of error. That statement, if you were to read it, that's what he means. Move on, go to the next verse. No. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا سَمِعَتْ بِمَكْرِهِمْ he says in the next verse, he says, when the wife of the minister heard, when Zuleikha heard of their gossip, he did not call it when, he, when she heard the sayings or the talk of the woman. He calls it makar. He said, he didn't say, فَلَمَّا سَمِعَتْ بِأَقْوَالِهِنْ أَوْ كَلَامِهِنْ He says, بِمَكْرِهِنْ مَا كَارَ Three letters. He explained by saying, مَا كَارَ What does makara mean? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe the words, the statement of the woman, which looks, he, looks like they're only saying khabar, they're only giving information, they're only saying a statement, nothing more and nothing less than that. It doesn't say anything else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the actual statement by saying makr. Makr means, you know, it's like a word, it's like a word, it's like saying, subhanAllah, that makr is something that it appears in the eyes of the normal people, like something general, but deep down it's evil. Deep down there's deception, there's deceit, there's something cunning. And that's the question I want to ask you. What's so cunning about saying that the wife of the minister, the only saying the news, the wife of the minister tried to seduce her slave. What's wrong for her? Her heart has reached the state of, of love. Indeed, she's done, doing something mistake. Where's the cunning words of he here? Where's the deceit? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call it makr? And this is the beauty of tafsir. Let us look together, bi'ithni Allah azza wa ta'ala, of how the ulama described this statement. And what the women intended and what they wanted. See, last week, last week, the last lesson we said that Allah azza wa jal describes the evil plot and plan, the deceit of shaitan, by da'ifa in the case in the, the shaitan can da'ifa and then he says and he يقر, and he, he agrees with what the minister says that indeed the the makr of the woman or the kaid of the woman is azim the plot and the the deceit of the woman is great it's impactful it's dangerous women dangerous jinn da'if weak so I was intending when I was wanting to prepare the lesson today I wanted to, to subhanallah go away from the story and give you examples that's happening here. But wallahi, when I dived into the tafsir, I'm not, the example is here, Khalas, let's just talk about the example. How the ulama describe each statement in that, each word in that statement, it, it blew my mind. It blew my mind. And wallahi, you're going to realize how indeed the deceit and the deception and the evil plot and planning of the evil woman, not all women, the evil woman, how great it is. Because women, generally, they might do actions that seem innocent, but they have evil thoughts behind. They have evil plot and plan, yani, embedded in their innocent looking actions or sayings. طيب. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, let's go back to the statement, let's dissect the statement. وَقَالَ نِسْوَةٌ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ The women of the city said, so all the women in the city were talking, gossiping. Imra'atul Aziz, the wife of the minister. Is there anything that seems evil about this statement? What are they saying? They're saying the wife of the minister. They're calling, they're saying who she is? No. No. See, subhanAllah, what they meant was, why didn't they call her by her name? They knew her name. They, they knew her name. They said Imra'atul Aziz, meaning here they didn't even bother calling her by her name. She's not worthy of being called by her name. So we're going to describe her. We're going to give her a description. We're not going to call her by her name. In other words, they are degrading her. They are disrespecting her. And remember, she's the wife of the Aziz, you know, high status. So they said, Aziz. Meaning, we're not even going to bother mentioning your name, Ya Zulaikha. We're not gonna we're gonna disrespect you to the extent we're gonna describe who you are. We're not gonna mention who you are. 
we're going to describe who you are, degrading the woman. And this is يعني, generally, يعني, that time it was between the wife and the, and the husband. That's how they described it. But I want to put things in our perspective. يعني, for example, for example يعني, me, if I was to address my father, I would call him Ya Abi, father, Baba in, in Lebanese, uh, dad. If I call him by his real name, my father's real name is Samir. If I was to call him Samir, uppercut straight away. You know, gone. And my dad still does I do kickboxing, and it's not like in, I'm joking. No, no, straight uppercut. This is the reality, because that's disrespect to my father. That is disrespect to my father. Okay? So it was a, that statement, Imratul Aziz, the wife of the, of the minister, that was a degrading. Is that it? No. Still, same word. Imratul Aziz, the evil deception and deceit behind the women gossiping and talking. Again, from the same word, Imratul Aziz, the wife of the minister, hear what they meant also, indirectly. Is that you're the wife of the minister? What are you doing? Look at your status, how high it is. You're different. Your mistake, Imrat Aziz, is different to any other woman in all of Egypt at the moment. You're the wife of the minister. You are the wife of the minister. How dare you do such things? So again, Imrat Aziz degrading her. Imrat Aziz, you have a high status. In what you did, even worse, like generally, even a hadith, يعني, an old man that commits zina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will not talk him on the day of judgment. Because in khatyar, you're an old man. <laughs> يعني, you shouldn't be doing these things. That's why the mistake of the student knowledge, of, of the, the mistake of the student of the knowledge, or uh, the mistake of the sheikh, and the mistake of the imam is much more greater than the same mistake of any other Muslim. Of any other Muslim. Any other layman, any other general person. Yani for example, say you're the one that's in the family, yeah? you're the one that's Alhamdulillah subhanahu wa blessed you by being religious, by coming to the masajid, by coming to the lectures. If you swear, hey, they look at you differently. And even if the whole family is non-religious, for example, and you're the only one that's religious, if you say damn or you say something that's well, well, like a swear word, they they, 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 they say, what you? You said this, yani you, you're trying to pray. You're the one that's telling us to be good. And you, these words came out of your mouth. It's the same concept. And you did this, Ya Zulaikha. You did this, you are in the highest status. That's the second thing. From just Imra'atul Aziz. What's the third one? Imra'atul Aziz. What does it mean? Literally, the wife of the minister. Yani the sin is even more greater. You're married. You're the wife of the minister. You're married and you did such things. You are married and you did such things. Just for saying Imra'atul Aziz. That innocent word that seemed very general. The deceit they had, the intention behind this. And I'm going to explain why this is يعني, evidence. Because of what's going to happen next. It's not like I'm making things up. No, no, no. This is evil. They had a, a very important goal at the end, two goals at the end actually. Wallahi, they had a goal. They had a massive intention here. You're gonna be you're gonna be shocked when you hear it. So they said, You're married. You're married. Yani, if he was someone that was single, if he was someone that was single, understandable. It's not it's not it's allowed, but it's haram, obviously. But it's more understandable. It's more understandable. And subhanAllah, my brothers and my sisters, let's just get back to today. Yani these people in Egypt were non-believers. Most of them were polytheists. And they even understood and knew that sleeping or fornication, especially if you're married, is a much more greater flaw. A much more greater flaw. What do we have today in society? Billah alaykum, what do we have today in society? Aren't they trying to normalize the man having a mistress? So he's married and then he has a side, uh, what they call it? A side cheek. Yeah? They're normalizing it, generally speaking. And they're normalizing that the woman that's married, if she has a mutual acceptance with her stupid husband, that she's allowed to go sleep around with other men? And they normalizing these things? Isn't that what society is pushing? Billah alaykum, I ask you a question. Isn't that something that they are normalizing today? Not long ago, I can't remember how long, but this was, يعني, it went viral because a lot of the Muslim speakers actually spoke about this. So I remember this properly. We all know who, uh, we all know who Will, Will Smith Will Smith is. We all know who he is. He's an actor. 
And subhanAllah, they had, a, they had an interview, or he had an interview with his wife. And I think his wife is an actor, or she's, some, she's famous somehow. And she's openly saying to, the, to her husband that I slept with another guy. She's openly saying that she slept with another guy, and apparently she slept with her son's friend. Son's friend, apparently. And she's saying, that's my right as the woman, I can do whatever I want. Wala akhiri. Heather Will Smith is the husband. He's got no choice but to accept it. He was crying without any tears. He was ripped, ripped, because he's a normal man. I don't care who you are, what you are. If you are a man, you're going to be ripped to shreds. And the people will bag him. But he was ripped, you can tell. You can just, a man, to a man, you can tell as soon as you see the person's face. You can tell. He's not happy with what happened. But the world stood by her. The world stood by her. This is society that we live in today. If him, Will Smith, slept with his daughter's friend, I don't know if he has a daughter, but say he slept with his daughter's friend, all of the world would have won against him. All of the world would have won against him. Subhanallah. And it's something that's unnatural. People thousands and thousands of years were more advanced morally than the people we have today. They were more advanced morally than what we have today. Allahu Akbar, Allah, is this something we need to contemplate and understand? They know, subhanAllah, a mistress and a woman that's married can sleep around and well, what, what's this? What, how low of, of society have we reached? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So the word Imra'atul Aziz, this innocent looking statement, the wife of the husband, the wife of the minister, had three evil things behind it. First, they didn't mention her name, degrading her. Second, is that you are the wife of the minister, you have a high status, so your sin is not like our sin. And the third one is that they are indicating that you are a wife, so your sin is even greater. You are a wife of the minister. The next, next couple of words. It's just, it's just general information. It's khabar. In Arabic, it's called khabar. It's a general, innocent statement that the wife of the Aziz, they want to say how evil that was, she seduced her gunam, her slave, her son to be, or adopted son. What do they mean? If Imrat al Aziz has three evil things, what are we going to look at here? What are we going to see here? They say, the ulama say, Turawidu fataha. Here, the word fataha, their indication was that he's a slave. Imrat al Aziz, ya Zulaikha, if you're going to cheat on your husband, if you're going to seduce someone, do not seduce a slave. Do not seduce a slave. If you're going to do it, do it to someone that's at least in your level. Do it to someone at least in your level. So here they are mocking her. Are you taking advantage of your slave? Are you taking advantage of your son? To rawid fataha? Yani fataha? Like as if, yani he is your slave? What does this indicate to us as well? It indicates, like I said previously, is that it looked like all of the women were doing وَلْعِيَذُ بِاللَّهِ حَرَامٍ of zina but it was someone that wasn't a slave it was someone that's a free man on their mustawa, on their level so they are shocked when you did it with someone that's less you know, a slave for them it was an object وَلْعِيَذُ بِاللَّهِ and obviously Yusuf Yusuf Aisitam was no slave but that, that's why it appeared to them يعني. like an object like, a, like something that you use and you throw وَلْعِيَذُ بِاللَّهِ use You've tarnished your reputation for a slave. The second thing, they said, yeah? If you look at it, it says that she seduced the boy, Yusuf. That's also an evil uh, statement. If you were to look at it in this way, and instead of Yusuf coming and seducing you, you know, a guy does it to a woman. You did it to him. Also an embarrassment. Also a type of mockery. Also a type of deceit. Makar. And the third one, two. Just a little ta. Turawidu fataha an nafsi. If you look at some of the translations, it says, 
seduced, past tense. No. In Arabic it says, tu rawidu, not rawidat, tu rawidu. That she, should, she seduced him and she's going to continue on seducing Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. So in the past and in the present and in the future. Just with the letter ta. Tu rawidu fataha an nafsi. Allahu Akbar. General statement. It is all a general statement that now you can, when you dissected it, you see how evil these women were. Innocent statement that, يعني, subhanAllah, no one will ever give her a second thought. They have tarnished her. بهدلوة, they embarrassed her. شرش حوة, they wiped the floor with her. Up to here. Did I finish now? Wallah, I didn't. قد شغفها حبا. What does قد شغفها حبا mean? It means her love to a slave. Her love to this young boy has become an obsession. She's obsessed with him. And the sickness obsession, not you know, obsessed a little bit now, she became sick. She did not act, she did not move, she only was thinking about him, him and only, and how am I gonna, how am I gonna introduce him, how am I gonna able to rape him, how am I gonna able to sleep with him, what am I supposed to do, how am I supposed to prepare myself? Her mind and her heart is only about Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. That's it. All she was thinking about was Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Obsessed. She was obsessed. Then she, they say, Inna lanaraha fi dalalim mubeen. Indeed, we see her in a state of error. Of error. What she's done is a big mistake. So what, what, what is all this about? What is all, what's all this about? They said this statement. All of what they said, that Imran al-Aziz, by degrading her, calling her a wife to the minister, how can you do this? You're a married woman. And you did it to a kid, instead of the kid doing it to you. Huh? And you, you done it once, you're going to continue on doing this. You're obsessed with him. All of that for what? All of that is for them to see Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. All of what they said, the deceit, the entire gossip, their priority here, their intention here, their objective here, was to lay eyes on Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam because they've never seen him, they've only heard of him. They've never seen him before. The whole statement, the deceit behind the whole statement, this is the, the evil plot and plan of women. Wallahi, one word huh, looks so innocent and they had so much evil thoughts and so much evil behind it. The seat of the woman. Inna la narahi fi dalim mubin. What does inna la narahi fi dalim mubin? That we see in her subhanAllah in a state of error. What does that mean? Is that it? Khalas? Just the seat? No. This was an open challenge to Zalaikha. Open challenge. How? This is an open challenge. They want to hear, they want her to understand, to know this. They were talking behind her back, this information, they knew it was going to get to her. They knew this information was going to get to her. And when they said, we, are, we see her in a state of error, she's done a massive mistake. It was an open challenge that us, who are lower than you, Yazulaikha, lower than you in status, if we were put in the same situation, we would never, ever, do what you did. So in other words, we are better than you, Zulaikha. Say, for Halik Aish, you're showing off at us for what? All the challenge. Women only do challenge themselves. The problem we have today with the women. Allahu Akbar, man. You worry if you take your wife to someone else's house, if she has something, he's going to have something, just that across, like, and go this, and... The continuous challenging between the sisters, those who do not feel Allah, Azza wa Jal, She's got a car, you're going to get a car. She, uh, he, he got a gold, you're going to buy her gold. If you are, I'm not about. Wallahi al it's a massive problem. But the challenge that woman challenges her constantly is because that's how they are. Especially when they have this world that they're number one priority in life. So it was an open challenge to Zulaikha. Taib Allah alaykum, I ask you a question. Did any of us 
Two things. I'll ask you two questions. The first one is, how innocent was that statement? Did you ever think that all the evil was behind it for them to have to see Yusuf salam, that statement? That innocent statement? Did you ever think that? Did you ever come across that? No. I'm pretty sure Allah alam. The second one is, didn't we ever question ourselves, ma'am, how did they find out? How did the women of the city find out? Because when the, when the minister said to Yusuf A'rid an hadha Yusuf Keep quiet about this Do you think Yusuf is going to go spread gossip? No So we've got three other options We have three other options Either the minister himself Meaning the husband Which highly, highly doubtful You highly doubt it Because he doesn't want to embarrass himself even more The second one could be the witness He went but that's also quite doubtful because he sided with her at the start. He wanted to prove her innocence, as we mentioned last week. So come in, that's kind of doubtful. There's one more person. Her herself, Zulaikha. Zulaikha was the reason behind the gossip. The wife herself was the reason behind the gossip. Keith, how? Well, and this makes the most sense, Allah Ta'ala Ana. Zulaikha was a woman of status. She was a woman that was very popular. Obviously, she had friends. And these friends seemed like they sucked up to her, يعني, because she was, had money and things like that. And that's what you see in society generally. يعني. They're leaking her boot, as they say today. So, what happened was when Yusuf subhanAllah rejected her, she couldn't cope. So, she had to vent. She had to vent. She's not going to vent to her husband. She's venting to her friends, so-called friends. And they've and she's told them about what's happened. These people are evil. These people do not add her friends for the sake of Allah. Azza wa Jal. No. Any friend that you have is not that is not God fearing. There's evil behind them. So these are the women of Allah Ta'ala Alam. They're the ones that keep spreading the news in the city. So she informed them, they went out and informed others. Why? And what what reason? Why? Why did you vent to them? I need to vent. I need to vent. Today, the sisters today, Wallahi al-Azim, they call people in to their houses and they vent about their family problems, their husband is an issue, their kids, and wa'ila akhrihi. To who? To people that do not fear Allah Azza wa Jal. To people that do not fear Allah Azza wa Jal. They are the worst of people. Be careful you're talking to sister. This is more to sisters more than their brothers. Well, Allah, I think and brothers, if you're here, tell this information to your wives or your wives to be. Be careful who you speak to. You know, Zulaikha thought these were her friends. They went in Kharabuddin, they went and exposed and caused fitna in all of Egypt. Well, Allah, I mean, we have sisters who invite, they, they say they're religious, they invite over people that don't pray, people that don't wear hijab. Brother, I ask you, sister, and I ask you, Wallah, I'm ask you, Lillah. I make an oath here. So you have to answer this, How can you invite someone to your house? How can you trust someone that has betrayed Allah Azza wa Jal? They have betrayed someone more valuable than you'll ever be. They have betrayed Rabbil Alameen. They don't pray, they betrayed Allah. They don't wear the scarf, they betrayed Allah. They don't fast. They, they betrayed Allah Azza wa Jal. The one, Allah Azza wa Jal, the one has given them things that are priceless. Why have you given them? They've, Allah Subhanahu has given them things that are priceless and they betrayed him. Why wouldn't they betray you? They ask yourself. See, it is time to wake up. Wallahi, the man issues that I know from young youths that are getting married, 22, 23, 24, all same stories, bro. All same stories. Wallahi, it, it sometimes yani, makes me tear up when I hear these stories. Wallahi, it tears me up. I don't want to mention things because people will know what I'm talking about. But Wallahi Al-Azim, it teased me up. One, two, three, four boys, five boys. They have not, I've never met them. I told them this story. I told them why they divorced. All because of the same thing. This woman, his wife, befriended this woman. Either this woman is not God's fearing. She's not married. She's not, she's, she's, uh, subhanAllah, she's not married. So she's jealous. She wants the husband. Or this woman is unhappy in her marriage and she wants to destroy another marriage. It is so common, so common 
in the, in the ones who are getting married at, at a young age. If the woman aren't strong enough, if they don't have a strong personality, well, I'm telling you this from, from, as an advice. Make sure you tell your wives, be careful, your friend. The Prophet what does he say? He says, وَلَا تُصَاحِبْ إِلَّا مُؤْمِنٍ Do not accompany except a believer. Not a Muslim. Not a Muslim here. Mu'min, a believer. Even that believer, do not tell him everything. What happens in the household stays in the household. It stays between you as a wife and you as a husband. That's it. Don't even get the kids involved. Wallahi al-Azim, the man of people that just talk, vent. I'm venting, brother. I'm venting. And they go to other people and they are protected by law not to talk. I mean, any woman that doesn't talk. Wallahi al something that we need to understand. Sisters, wake up. Be, be careful who, you, who you're befriending. Be careful who you're befriending. That person can be the one and the main reason why your marriage will, will be destroyed. Yeah, I mean the shaitan, the shaitan, the shaitan. His goal is to destroy family households, husband and wife. Why? As soon as the family is destroyed, the kids are destroyed. Those kids who are destroyed, their kids are destroyed. Wallah, I've seen it. Most of the people who are troubled, my Allah is trying to protect the kids. You know, Wallah, I don't blame the kids anymore for anything. Wallah, I don't blame the kids anymore. It's the parents. Sorry. I've come to an agreement. Every kid is innocent. Every kid is amazing. It's the parents. It's the parents. When you destroy your family, for what? Why? I don't love him anymore. After what? After what? There's no love. Put my rahmah. Put my wadda. Put the mercy. Think about you. Don't think about yourself anymore. Think about the kids. You want to leave for the kids, bro? Get them with time, man. Oh, that's it. We'll put them in school and that's it. The schools will look after them. Shalom What's his joke, man? You're going to be held accountable for these kids. The shaitan's objection is to destroy a family because he destroys communities. So if he doesn't work with his waswasa, which is weak, weak, come to an agreement that's weak. Who does he send? Women who their plot and is stronger than the, than the shaitan. That was my whole lecture today. That is my whole lecture today. That's how I turned the whole lecture around. To explain that the cave and the plot and the plan of the shaitan is weak and the plot and plan of the woman is strong, the shaitan uses the women to destroy the communities. The evil woman. The women that do not fear Allah. Fear Allah we need to be careful. We need to make sure, and do not be very obsessive, but we need to educate our women, our wives, our sisters, our daughters, our mothers. Do not be friendly except the person that fears Allah. Fears Allah Do you know how? As soon as you utter your mouth about some, someone, that person says to you, look, please, fear Allah I don't want to talk about no one. I don't want to talk about no one. That's the person you hold on to. That's the friend you hold on to. And sisters, another thing I want to mention to you, sisters, pay attention. Sisters, pay attention. That group that you have, that you go to Brody to have coffee with, and you talk about that woman and that woman and that woman, Wallahi that group will go to another group and they'll talk about you. You're not special. If they're talking and eating the flesh of another woman's sister, they're going to eat your flesh. They're going to backbite you and slander you. Khidiya qa'ida, this is a principle and this is the reality. This is the reality. وَلَا تُصَاحِبْ إِلَّا مُؤْمِنٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this fitna. He says uh, about the people who are gossiping and, and tail carrying, the women who are very often they're doing it in the family. He says, لَا يُدْخُوا جَنَّةً مَامٍ You're not entering Jannah, woman. Sister, you're not going to enter Jannah. You, the sister that goes from house to house, to destroy house to house, Wallahi, you will not enter Jannah. I didn't say this. The Prophet said this. لا يدخل جنة نمام أو قتات. He will, he or she will not enter Jannah. The one that tail carries, the one that gossips, the one that slanders. You don't enter in Jannah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala described this fitan of tail carrying as something that is greater than killing, because it kills you slowly. It can destroy a whole person. It can kill a person while he's alive.
So that was my intention as well behind this subhanAllah statement, how, how the ulama described it. Something that looks so innocent, yet it was very deceitful. And that the, the shaitan's plan is weak, but the, 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 the plot and plan of the, of the jinni woman is strong. Is strong. So, so they did all this gossip. Their intention was to see him. Open challenge. They wanted to see. It was this young man that drove the wife of the minister crazy. They wanted to see. They wanted to. Well, and what we're going to want to find out, they wanted him to when they, when they finally see him. They wanted to see. Tayyip. All of what I mentioned in that verse, in that statement, it's called makar, yeah? When I say this is called makar qawli. This makar is by using your tongue. Then by words. All this deceit, the evil plot and planning of the women in the city, all it was was evil makar from the lisan, from the tongue. Makar qawli. فَلَمَّا سَمِعَتْ بِمَكْرِهِنَّ أَرْسَلَتْ إِلَيْهِنْ Allah subhanahu wa says, when she heard about their makr, the makr of qawl, what they did, the deceit, the evil plot and plan that they did with their tongue, أَرْسَلَتْ إِلَيْهِنْ She called for them, come, 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 come. She is going to begin the makr, the deceit, the evilness, but makr fa'li. She's going to deceive them by actions. How? What does she do? What happens to Yusuf? All that and more, inshallah, in the next week's lesson. I'll call you this. I'll call you this. I'll call you this. I'll call you this.